Welcome back to all our attendees. Just to inform you, the contest is on. Do not forget to go after your session is over, with, after the speaker finishes our session, to check the question answers and answer them and win the gifts. Our next speaker, Ms. Shadwali Singh, Senior Account Manager at Power to Mac, speaking on today's topic is email authentication, the missing angle of cybersecurity at energy sector. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Marvin. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you very much for, for participating in this knowledge sharing session today. Um, so today I will be uh, mostly talking about email authentication and how we need different tools and different, uh, you know, different uh, features and protocols and tools can help you present the, like, protect your business domain. Um, just allow me a second. All right. Um, so yeah, in today's session, we'll be talking about the what is email authentication, risks associated with it, and the protocols and tools that can be used to prevent those attacks against your own business domain. Now, just to brief you a little bit about the terminologies, because we'll be using these terms later in the slide, email spoofing, it is the creation of email messages with a port sender address. So the technique used mostly to, you know, mostly for spamming or tricking users. Email phishing is a fraudulent attempt to obtain sensitive information, data such as username, password, credit card numbers, or other sensitive details by implementing as some legitimate entity. Now, when the email spoofing and phishing attack happens due to email authentication failure, it leads to multiple risks. They can be CEO fraud. Say, where a spoofed email, which is, are being sent on behalf of the CEO of your organization or CTO of your organization. So like, you know, mostly executive executives of your organization. They can be fake invoices where your vendors, your customer are, are receiving wrong bank details for the, from the attackers to wire the money. They can also be selling of drugs and weapons and spreading of ransomware. And they can be, and when there are so many wrongful acts that are happening on behalf of your domain, there is an obvious uh, risk, legal risk associated with your domain or the email ID owner. We have seen like cyber crime has exploded in the past couple of years with major phishing attack leading to multiple DC scams across the world from WHO domain to White House domain. All major organization in the world has seen surge in cyber crime during this ongoing pandemic. These phishing attacks are becoming increasingly more targeted, and a number of new tricks have also been found. For example, just last month, around 10,000 Microsoft users were targeted by a new phishing scam that sent fake messages pretending to be from FedEx and DHL. These attacks were aimed to extract victims' work email credentials. How they do? What they do? What did they do? They used great deal of social engineering to frame the email title, name, and content so that you tend to take them on these emails. They were all, they also like did the brand impersonation for Microsoft and asked for Microsoft account credentials to view the invoice document. Also, these, e these email attacks included an HTML attachment instead of URL. And they hosted themselves, their pages on free services like Quip and Google Frame Firebase to track the security technologies. As the attackers are evolving, you know, day by day, so are the number of phishing attacks. Like you can see the graph on the right side, it's a, it represents a Casper C analysis that has revealed that the number of new phishing attacks in Oman, for example, it, in Oman, for example, was more than 128,000 in just first three months of COVID period. So today we will be talking about the protocols and tools that can be used to protect, used for email authentication and to protect your business domain. In the following slides, I will be briefing you about what is SPF, what is DKIM, DMARC, MPSPS, PLS, RPD, and DME. So let's start with SPF. SPF stands for End Policy Framework. Okay, it is one of the earliest and most widely used industry standard for email security. It operates on concept. It is only how explicitly authorized users or like senders to sell from your domain and block everyone else. What happens? 
when you are implementing SPF on your domain, what you do is like once you once you have published this SPF record on your DNS containing all the list of approved IP addresses that can send email on your domain, the email server authentication this when receiving email server uses like sees an email from your domain, for example, it will it will go, go and cross check with the sender's IP address IP addresses that uh, the like list that you have provided. And if the sender's IP address just matches on the just on the list that you have provided, it gets authenticated. If not, then it it will not get authenticated, and it will feel it will get rejected by the server. So only if it is authenticated, it will get delivered to the. The second protocol is DKIM. DKIM stands for Domain Keys Identified Main. It is an email authentication protocol that has two main components. One is digital signature, and another is public key encryption key. So what happens now? DKIM gives every email from your domain digital key. that's encrypted and all private. Now receiving email server can decrypt those private signatures using the public key that you have published on your DNS. The signatures tells the receiving server that your email is legitimate and has been has not been altered while in transit. Okay. Now, if an attacker interrupt, intercepts and alters this email and sends an e a fake email from your domain, this, this digital signature fails to decrypt. And then the email will not get authenticated and won't make it to your uh, customer's inbox. Next is DMARC. DMARC stands for Domain Based Message Authentication Reporting and Conformance. It is an authentication system that protects your organization's domain or any business domain from spoofing phishing attacks. To be able to understand DMARC in detail, let, let's examine a scenario when there is no DMARC into the picture. Okay. Now, now, in this case, when an email starts from the sending domain, there is no way for the MTA of the receiving domain to authenticate the email server or the content of the email and it may end up delivering it to the recipient. And this is a scenario when DMARC is there, okay? Now, in this case, when an email starts from the sending domain and it gets received by the MTA of receiving domain, the MTA will go and query for SPF, DKIM, and DMARC record to authenticate this email server and the content of this email. As a DMARC policy plays a very crucial role at this junction, it enables a domain owner to specify what they would like to do in case an email fails both SPF and DKIM checks. Okay, so therefore, based on these policies right here, inbox, spam, and reject, you, your email will either get into the inbox of the recipient, will be quarantined, or will get completely rejected. Okay, at this junction, you get two reports. One is called forensic report, another is called aggregate report. Only after evaluating these reports, you will be able to make your judgment as which policy you want to be at. Now let's see how DMARC builds into SPF and DKIM. So every email that we receive has a visible header and a hidden header. Now we as a recipient mostly believe and make our judgment based on this visible header. So it's like, okay, it is from CEO, let's, make a, make, let's act immediately. So let me show you how DMARC builds on SPF and DKIM and protects you in this case. Now, in this example that you can see here, you will, you will be, you will, you can see that what SPF will do is like it will check for the alignment of the return path and the from header. Okay, this if this is aligned, it passes the authentication. If not, it fails the authentication. Okay, what DKIM does here is. If your D equals domain or like DKIM signing domain does not match your header from domain or the organizational domain, it will be it will not get authenticated and it will fail. So both SPF and DKIM fails, your DMARC check fails, and your email will have authentication failure. Okay. Now it's uh, NTSTS. It is MTSTS is an internet standard that functions by improving the security of the connection, security of the connection between two SMTP servers, say your sending server and your receiving server. Okay. 
now what happened is like uh, it's like uh, like let me give you a little bit of history like initially when smtp protocol was designed the emails were sent over an unencrypted connection and in a plain text format later on it was it was realized that this is an issue and encryption component was added to the smtp protocol and because it was a retrofit to the existing infrastructure it had to maintain the backward capability as well that means if a receiver does not support encryption it will be email will be sent over to them in an unencrypted connection as well as a plain text now attacker can really use advantage of the plain text email what attackers can do now here is they can intercept the encryption negligence and lead to smtp downgrade attack what happens is then is they can downgrade the encrypted connection making them look like an unencrypted sender and send their email in a clear text format and this email in clear text format they can clearly you know they can easily uh, read and manipulate by attackers like so attackers can also uh, intercept the send a request made by your sending server when they are trying to deliver email receiving and rerouting those emails to their own server which they control by and we call this as we call this dns spoofing attack now what happens here is like when attackers like the when attackers make of smell like spoof your dns they can control the email and the uh, the email text that are being sent and transit over the in the between the receiving and the sending server so therefore mtscs will help us here by enforcing tls encryption of emails delivered to your domain so the messages are sent over a secured connection and we are and are not delivered in a clear text format okay so this effectively helps in mitigating existing security problems with this smtp server that enables opportunistic encryption now next is tls reporting now tls rpt basically works in combination with nbsc it lets you receive constant reports about the status of email in your domain so like it communicates the number of successful delivery successfully like you know the emails that got delivered successfully in the to the recipient domain it also communicates the number of emails that failed to be delivered and the failure details you can analyze this report and make a quick quick resolve like you know quick resolve issue what what is like if there are any issues so a quick just to sum up what is what does mtscs and tls rpg do so number one mtscs protect against any man in the middle attack like smtp downgrade or dns spoofing which can allow your data to be captured by malicious entities and tls rpg allows you to identify delivery issues encountered by emails addressed to your domain now we have our final feature which uh, uh, is very uh, cool which is called beamy so beamy stands for brand indicators for message identification now it is a standard that uses brand presence to to give email more credit by like you know by affixing the logo of brand of your brand on every email that are being sent out from your domain so it acts as a second to your to let your customers know that it's from you in addition to that it also acts as a tool for your marketing campaign like every time you send an email you, every time you send an email to your customer your customer will see your logo in their inbox reinforcing your brand image so with that i would like to thank you all i hope you enjoy the session thank you very much for that presentation uh, we would uh, just to let people know question answers there's a button over there on your extreme uh, right to ask questions and i keep reminding you about the contest because if you don't contest i will be taking the gifts and going home so please contest for it and uh, answer all the questions right thank you ma'am for your time and uh, see you again soon thank you very much have a good day